One of the key ideas of algebraic topology is to consider that two spaces are equivalent to one another if they have the same shape, but in a very interesting way. Let's take a very simple example, the letter A. We can create two different forms out of it, a thick form and a thin form. Topologically, they are one and the same, even though they look different. And we can continuously move from one shape to the other. A nice way to do this is to create line segments that connect each point on the boundary of the thick A to unique points on the thin subladder A. We can continuously slide one shape into the other along the line segments. This process can happen during the time interval from 0 to 1. At t equals 0 is in its thick form. At t equals 1 in its fully thin form. The process is explained by the family of functions ft from a to a. The subscript t indicates that the function is not static, but varies with time. Each ft corresponds to a specific moment in the transformation process within the interval 0, 1. Formally, ft of a is the point to which a given point a has moved at time t. This continuity ensures that there are no sudden jumps or abrupt changes in the position of any point as time progresses from t equals 0 to t equals 1. Each point's movement is smooth, maintaining the geometrical integrity of the latter throughout the entire transformation. Each point moves along a straight line at a constant speed towards its final destination. So the constant speed and direct path ensure that the transformation is orderly and predictable. This example leads us to a general definition. A deformation retraction of a general space X onto a subspace A is a family of maps ft from X to itself, with t belonging to the interval 0, 1, such that f0 is 1, so the identity map and f1 of x, so the image of the function, is the subspace A, and ft restricted to the subspace A is the identity map as well, for all times t. The family ft should be continuous in the sense that the associated map from x Cartesian product with i to x is continuous. It's easy to find more examples similar to the one we started with, with the deformation retraction ft being obtained by sliding along the lines. Here is an example of the deformation retraction of a Mobius strip, a one-sided surface onto its core circle in a continuous way. Speaking of continuous, to avoid overusing the word, we'll adopt the convention that maps between spaces are always assumed to be continuous, unless we say otherwise. These figures illustrate another deformation retraction where a disk with two smaller open subdisks is continuously transformed into three separate subspaces. Now that you have a good intuition of what this process looks like, let's finally describe it in a more general and abstract way. Let's say that we have a topological space X. Our goal is to transform X into another space Y, just as we wanted to transform the thick A into the thin A. This transformation can be described by a family of functions, F from X to Y. Mathematically, this transformation is parametrized using the interval 0, 1, denoted as I. The interval i and the space x are put together by something called the Cartesian product. It consists of all ordered pairs x, t, where x is a single point in x and t is a point in i. Each such pair represents a point x at a specific time t during the transformation. What happens is that you visualize each point in x extending from t equals 0 to t equals 1. For intuitive understanding, this extension can be thought of as tracing a line in a new direction, analogous to the dimension of time. X Cartesian product I then becomes a cylinder. The cylinder can be visualized as containing all of the intermediate states of X from the beginning of the transformation at t equals 0 to the end at t equals 1, where X has been transformed into Y. The cylinder x Cartesian product i actually becomes f of x in y. f1 essentially collapses or projects the entire transformation process down to the final configuration in y. 
In deformation retraction, you often deal with a single function f expressed as a family ft, where f0 is the identity on x and f1 is the retraction onto a subspace. The focus is often on how the space x can be continuously simplified or shrunk onto a subspace a without changing its essential topological features. The emphasis is on the transformation process itself rather than on showing equivalence between two completely distinct functions. But a deformation retraction is actually a special case of the general notion of homotopy, where now you will need a second function g to be used as an endpoint. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. When you have two continuous functions f, g from x to y, a homotopy between f and g is a family of continuous functions h from x Cartesian product with the interval 0, 1 to y, such that h of x0 is f of x for all points in x. So at the beginning of the homotopy, the function is f, and h of x1 is g of x for all points in x. So at the end of the homotopy, the function is g. Essentially, a homotopy shows you how a function can be continuously transformed into another function, and it helps to define an equivalence relation on the set of all continuous functions from x to y. A deformation retraction and a homotopy look very similar to each other. But a deformation retraction is a specific type of homotopy that is used to simplify a space into a subspace while maintaining its topological essence. A homotopy not necessarily. Now let's first see a concrete example of a deformation retraction. Consider the unit disk in R2. Now remove the origin 00. And then we form the punctured disk. We define a deformation retraction that continuously shrinks every point radially onto the boundary circle S1. This is the formula that we are going to use for this family of functions. R here is the radial distance from the origin. Theta is the angle in polar coordinates. And T is just the homotopy parameter from 0 to 1. For t equals 0, we get the identity. For t equals 1, we get the retraction onto S1, which is exactly a projection onto the unit circle. Now let's see a concrete example of a homotopy that is not a deformation retraction. Try to notice a difference between them. Consider again the punctured unit disk. We now define a homotopy that continuously shrinks every point towards the origin, rather than onto the boundary. This is going to be the formula of the homotopy. At t equals 0, we have the identity. At t equals 1, every point collapses to the origin. But the question is, why is this not a deformation retraction? A deformation retraction requires that the space be continuously deformed onto a proper subspace like the unit circle, and that the subspace remains fixed throughout the homotopy. The final space, the origin, 0, 0, is not a subspace of the punctured disk. In contrast, in the deformation retraction we saw earlier, the final space, which was the unit circle S1, was a subspace of the initial shape namely the punctured disk. Beyond that, a homotopy can collapse everything, leaving no subspace fixed. But a deformation retraction cannot. This video was inspired by this book. Check it out using the link in the description. And also guys, do not forget that we have a website where in one of its sections, you can submit your own personal research. Just send it to us via email, more details in the description. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.